Hello, everyone. I'm Jamie Flinchball, host of People Solve Problems, and we're here with Sarah Tilkins for another episode. Sarah, good to see you. Good to see you too, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, so you're you're an interesting one where you have two job titles: uh, senior manager of OpEx for GE Healthcare, obviously an organization with a long history of many different forms of continuous improvement, and you're also CEO of the KPI Lab. Um, which uh, new and interesting, interesting stuff going on there. So uh, great to hear about those roles. I'm sure probably as we talk through some of your your work here, we'll, we might dip our toes into both both roles. Uh, as I know, I, I know a lot of the capabilities and mindset is is often the same. So yeah. So let's just jump into your problem solving process. Um, I don't want to imply too much with a, a, a name like the KPI Lab, um, but that the selection of that name certainly implies a, a, a certain bias and interest. But why don't you tell me about your your mindset, your approach to problem solving? Yes. Yeah, so I think um, I've always been a problem solver. I've always loved puzzles. And I was introduced to Six Sigma when I was like 19 years old. So for some reason, that framework has always stuck with me, even though it took me a lot more years to learn what it actually was. I really liked the emphasis on define measure. Um, and that's just kind of how I have built out my personal framework. So I think um, really, I focus a ton on defining the problem. Um, I am both a black belt and a certified executive coach. And so really, regardless of what type of hat I'm wearing when I show up, I start with what's the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, with coaching, that is so fun because I can say I've been in conversations where I've been the client and I've spent an entire hour with my coach talking about something and we've ended the conversation with the problem isn't actually a problem. Yes. So it's really just, you know, like define a problem. And that is alignment with the KPI lab, right? So key performance indicator is how are you measuring success? And that's all part of the define the problem part of the process. And I also make KPI mean keep people interested, improving, innovating, inspired. And that's where I get to bring together both the technical problem solving stuff as well as the focus on people first. And I always say that I don't solve problems, I build problem solvers. Excellent. Um, yeah, just that, that thread around the problem isn't really a problem. Um, I, I'll, I can't tell you how many times people will complain about something and then we'll start digging in. And once we dig in, we'll either, either to uncover that it's not a problem or it's simply not a problem that you care to care to care about that you decide to care about you're like yeah I acknowledge that's not that's not good um but it's it's not a problem I need to go solve I've just noticed it um at that regard it do, do you you know I want to come back to the problem statement side but just just on that nugget do you do you notice the problem that problem isn't really a problem is that just as similar uh, just as uh, frequent on the coaching side as it is on the the more technical problem solving side I think both. And I'll say like, it's either not a problem or it's not as big of a problem as we made it out to be. So, I mean, there's often something there, but, you know, sometimes we think in problem solving in terms of like the divergent versus convergent thinking. So even when we're defining the problem, sometimes I really like to play with like, okay, is that really the best way to articulate what we're up against? And even just like diverging in how we're defining something can offer more context on, you know, is this or isn't it a problem? What's the impact? You know, again, clarifying how we measure success. So I think it shows up everywhere, but it's always just good to remember, you know, perspectives is a problem is different depending on what lens you look at it through. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It you know, people will say things like the process isn't fast enough, but the the goal is only to make it five percent faster, right? It's like I'm, we're not going to time equals zero, so it's it's not how long it takes. Um, so so defining problems, you mentioned you emphasize that and really like to spend some time there. 
And and that's one of the things that that tends to be true, sort of universal across different problem solving mindsets, whether it's you know A threes or black belts or whatever it might be. Um, and so you mentioned you know from black belt to certified executive coach. So just between those uh, two seemingly very different things, how is defining the problem the same, and how might it be different? Um, I think it's completely the same. Uh, no matter what lens you look at it through. Um, yeah, it, it, and it's really interesting because my, you know, technical experience as a problem solver, again, Six Sigma informs the way that I help people coach. And I think that more personalized coaching part of me helps inform the way that I lead technical problem solving. And it's just in the how we get curious with asking questions and how we support you know, the client or the coachee in going through the process. So, you know, with clients, again, what's important about this? Why are we solving this problem? What would it look like if it was solved? So really all I'm doing is, you know, how are they measuring success? What's the current state? What's the target state? Is this meaningful for them? So just offering questions to get them get clarity and then again, it's the same thing in organizational process problem, but it's that problem solving. It's that human element of, you know, like, what's important about this? Is this the thing that moves the needle for the team? Again, articulating the gap. So it really is the exact same process. Um, I just get to be called two different things sometimes when I'm doing it. Right. No, and that's and that's uh, I think you know foundational for a lot of these frameworks is to take the skills outside of them or beyond them, right? Because we're you know we could be having a just a side conversation and it still involves defining a problem, and we nobody's ever mentioned either of those roles of being a coach or mm -hmm. or a black belt. Um, so you do, as you mentioned, you kind of do a lot of coaching, right? Uh, as as an executive coach and in, in in you know within GE as well. Um, so, so part of that is, is assessing the person you're, you're coaching, uh, the capabilities they have, the mindset, the, the situation they're dealing with, whatever that might be. So how, how do you go about assessing, you know, individuals or teams as you engage them? Yeah, I think, um, like a lot of coaches, I kind of assume that everybody is already inherently capable and qualified and special. So really focused on helping people hone in on how they contribute the most value instead of a huge focus on the weaknesses. Um, and I think it's just, again, really, I just totally lost track of the question that you asked me. <laughs> so how, how you assess how you assess people or team? <laughs> yeah. So it's just, again, like offering questions that allow them to make the assessment for themselves. Yeah. So you know, I make problem solving an adventure. So first off, when you're coaching, it's like, are we going hiking or are we going scuba diving? And it's really helping people find like what type of an adventure they are on personally or within their organization, and then offering them specific tools and skills that will help them on their adventure. So it's not just the like skills training, it's that personalized approach to, oh, I'm climbing a mountain and in order to do that, I need X, Y, and Z. So in addition to just having the training, you actually understand how to use that training in the specific context of what's important to you and your personal purpose. Yeah, awesome. And and I, it's going to take that, pull on that adventure thread because you you know, if, if you task, tell anybody, hey, I want to spend a lot of this week problem solving, they're probably not going to be super excited. Um, but it, it it sounds like, and tell me if I'm reading this right, you, you take a deliberate approach to making it fun. Um, so am I reading that right? And if so, how do you how do you achieve that in problem solving? Um, absolutely. I think problem solving is the most fun. And that is one of the things I love to tell people is I want you to love your problems. And I think it's all about mindset. So I don't know if you're familiar with the thought model. Yes. Uh, but whenever I teach problem solving, I start with the thought model, right? Like you have a circumstance, you have a problem, or you're an engineer, and you have a thought about that. 
And that thought creates your feelings, your actions, your results. So if you walk into problem solving thinking you already have the solution, this is a waste of time, there's nothing to be learned here, the way that you experience the journey is probably not going to be that fun. But if you walk into problem solving believing there is something to be discovered or there is an opportunity here, you know, arguably you might get to the same place as a solution, but the way that you experience that journey and fall in love with the process is super, super different. So I think just offering that to people as a starting point is maybe historically problem solving has felt really hard, but let's just start from anything is possible and I have everything I need to solve this problem. So it's just giving people permission to open up to a different way of being with their problems and I think if you can make that mindset adjustment, all of the other stuff just kind of comes along for the ride. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And and having everything they need is usually one of those things they can point to very specifically, very discreetly and saying, hey, I don't have permission or we don't have the resources or we don't have this. And so they can, you know, they that could that can launch into a what do we not have kind of conversation. So how do you how do you either mitigate that or or get people past that uh, that that uh, that mindset of pointing at the things that they don't have in order to be successful? Uh, I think that our brains just really like to look for evidence again that that thought is true. So if the thought is I don't have what I need, right? You're looking to validate that. But what I would do is I would say, what do you have? What do you have access to right now? a ton of other teammates that you can ask for support, you know, executive sponsorship that you can escalate to if you need something. So it's just, again, flipping the script to you do have what you have. So let's list out all of our, you know, non-constraints. It's like a reverse constraint. And let's talk about what we can make from these ingredients. So it's just, again, like a little bit of a reframe. So instead of I can't, it's of course you can. What do we have available? No, really interesting, and and I and I I agree. The mindset uh, has a huge a huge impact. Um, uh, you know, we're we're not always good at self hacking uh, those types of things. So, so you know, some of us do it naturally, and and sometimes it it takes a, a coach, a facilitator, to help pull us through that uh, that moment and get us uh, get us moving in the right direction. Um, you know, you mentioned the idea of an adventure and climbing a mountain and you know, similar to climbing a mountain, right? You don't always know that you're going to be successful. I'm pretty sure my knees would give out before I got to the top. Um, but the same thing with problem solving, right? You, you either don't know if you'll be successful or or when or uh, what the what the path is that leads you to that success, right? So there's there's often this confidence in uh, lacking when we start to move forward. So while we're on this theme of mindset and and how you orient people. To, to engage, how do you how do you uh, handle that 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 confidence problem with jumping in to problem solving? I think just find a way to make it fun and to love the journey, right? If you can't, then maybe it's not a journey that you should be on, or maybe it just you know it looks a little different. You have to do it with a friend, or you have to do it in a different way. But you know, problem solving is something that's accessible to everyone. And, you know, when you ask that, what came up for me is, you know, like starting a company and walking a little bit further from my corporate stability to become a CEO. And that can be really scary. And there's a lot of new problems that I'm solving, but I am so in love with the journey that even, you know, like right now the destination doesn't matter a ton. So mm-hmm. just like, you know, not focusing on everything that you can't control, but what is now, what is easy, what is fun, what's in front of you. And just again, like building on that success and you get somewhere amazing, but it's just don't let it be hard. So whatever it feels hard, it's come back to what's the problem and, oh, I, I feel lonely or I don't feel capable. Okay, let's solve that and let's keep moving forward. So just yeah. don't let the obstacles get too big. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'd like to maybe explore, you know, go back to this idea of, you know, you're, you you have all this experience at GE. 
and and you've now gone off and created the KPI lab. Um, there's lots of people that go through a similar transition at some point, um, whether it's you know on their way to retirement or it's a break from their their career path or whatever that might be. So you've started to you know sort of straddle that exploration of being an inside resource, still a coach and a facilitator and a problem solver, to being an external resource. What what advice or or lessons have you learned about making that switch from being internal? Uh, to be an external? Um, I think, again, I'm not sure lessons learned yet because I'm still doing it, but I will share, um, I love my job at GE and I love this business that I'm building. So for me, it's just um, been a way that I can become more of myself. Um, I am just obsessed with trying new things. And when you're in a big organization, that takes a long time to implement change. Sometimes for people who love change like me, like I was finding myself getting frustrated that things weren't going faster. So in my own organization, I can control a lot of that and I can do all of the crazy innovative stuff and I can bring my lessons learned back to GE and I can bring GE kind of out to the world. So I'm not sure if that really answers the question, but it's just, um, again, back to that, like, we are who we are and we're already enough and already capable. This is just the way that I have thought to experience the journey and get to become all of myself. No, I, I love I love how you wrap that up. And, it, and, you know, in that, I think was a huge nugget, which is, you know, your outside experience is making more valuable internally, as well as your internal experience is making more valuable externally. And, um, you know, I, I, I always try to, you know, learn from all my experiences, but not just for my own benefit, but where do those lessons go? So I can certainly see how that, how that applies and how you've sort of solved the problem for yourself. Didn't look at it as a barrier and said, how do I, how do I do this? Well, I can do both. Um, and 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 make it work. So uh, so that's uh, that's that's fantastic. So uh, maybe just a quick nugget around the KPI lab. Um, you know how do how do people find you? Um, or or what what should they hear about the KPI lab? Um, so you can find me on LinkedIn or the KPI Labs website is just the KPI Lab dot com. And really, this is a space where I am blending leadership development and problem solving. So you have an executive certified ICF coach and a Six Sigma black belt. And I play with all of what I am in serving organizations and leaders to, again, just become their best self, find alignment, find how to use problem solving in meaningful ways. Um, and my clients are loving kind of that blend of work. So I'm having just a blast. Um, I think that a lot of times in organizations, learning and development is kind of one silo and lean organizations kind of sit somewhere else. But in lean, we're constantly the ones coaching and motivating and doing change management. So really, again, like the hybrid of those two worlds, I think, allows change to be possible in our organizations in just such different ways. And it's been, again, just so fun to explore that with different clients. Yeah. And hybrid's a good word because it's a you, you're combining the two, not just having two different, you know, uh, legs to the stool. So uh, I think that's a great explanation. I wish you all the best on your continued journey. And thank you for sharing with our our listeners, some of your experiences and perspectives. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the People Solve Problems podcast. Let's keep the conversation going. Visit jflinch.com for more episodes and other content. And continue to join us on your podcast app, of course. We greatly appreciate your feedback through reviews and ratings. Consider expanding your understanding of problem solving with Jamie's book, People Solve Problems, The Power of Every Person, Every Day, Every Problem, available on Amazon. Until next time, keep learning, innovating, and solving problems.